Hello, good day. All right, so this has always been the plan to do a number of videos in a number of areas and especially in the area of software development to cover a number of topics. So I wanna take you on a journey, okay? And this journey is gonna be from the absolute, well, absolute beginning, but from fairly early programming and simple programming all the way up to being able to do fairly complex things in computers with computers, right? Um, programming. And that's going to focus on the front end side of, you know, web development and then even more complex programming like on the desktop and system programming. But before I get into all that, this is a black diagram. This is a full chart and shows a number of boxes that I would like to cover, right? This on this journey. Um, some of the boxes, each one of them represents maybe one video, and I would try to keep each video no more than 15 minutes, around 10 to 15 minutes time frame. But some of the boxes are fairly complex and the topics and the ideas are too big to be covered in just one video. So some of the boxes might represent multiple videos. Uh, the other thing is, all I wanna do this is have feedback. And so if somebody says, oh, you know what, on so-and-so topic, I didn't get it, or I'd like to see some more examples or elaborate a little bit more or whatever, I don't mind going back and do yet another vi video on that topic, even if it comes, you know, sometime way later after I covered something else, right? So maybe let's say I did HTML and then now I'm on J um, JavaScript and somebody said, hey, I want to see some more HTML, just go back and do that. Because at the end of the day, what I want you to be able to do is go through all these videos and go through this whole thing and feel fairly competent at the end of it, okay? All right, now, with that said, this is a very simple chart. but this is more accurately what we're probably going to be looking at. Now with this, I understand, is a little bit more complex, okay? So let me kind of explain. Uh, it's pretty much the same thing like before. I want to really start off, like I say, from the beginning. And so I'm going to start with version control. For every software developer, developer, software engineer, version controlling your software is very, very important. You're not gonna be able to go very long professionally without being able to do it. You might get away doing it on your own projects at home, but sometimes you, you're not gonna realize the frustration you probably had when you deleted something or changed something, you can't go back to it or whatever the case is. So version control is very important and I'm gonna use Git, but you can use whatever you want, but I will show you how to install and use Git. Um, at your company, they might have Subversion or CVS or ClearCase or whatever but it's good to at least know some version control and get in the habit of using it. If you're not yet a professional, Git is a good place to start, start using it, get accustomed to the idea. Even if you go to a company that doesn't use Git, the idea of version control is not gonna be alien to you. No. Uh, after that, I'll have a video on just computer programming in general. What is it? Like what kind of problem can you solve with computer programming, right? What are the limitations? That's anything. That's probably gonna be a really short video, maybe five minutes, 10 minutes max. I'm not gonna spend too much time boring you. It's just to kind of set the frame and scope of what kind of things, you, um, you, if you wanted to get into computer programming, what kind of things you might be able to do with it. And understand that the field is always changing and things that you could have said computers couldn't do maybe 20 years ago when I first started my career, and what you can do today, you know, it's a little more di different, right? Because, you know, they're, they're just more disciplined um, in this area and people learn new techniques and all this other stuff, right? And the capabilities of the computers are just, better and new languages and what's not, what's not. So, but that's just general idea. Then we're kind of gonna go down the left side here and we need to focus on web development. And, and in web development, you have your front end and your back end. I will kind of explain what that is. And your know, front end is basically what the user of your web site or web application are gonna be encountering and how, what set of technologies you're gonna to use to make that available to them. And the back end is all the logic and fancy stuff that happen behind the scenes and the user doesn't see. So for example, when you use CNN, uh, you're using basically exposed to the front end technology, but that bringing up stuff from the back end is showing you all the news items and whatever stories, current events. And then if you keep refreshing the page, you know, as they change stuff in the back end, the front end is reflecting it. Same thing with Google Mail, Gmail, for example, right? Uh, you use in the web application in front and you know they're storing your mail somewhere else in the background they're processing it they're editing it wherever right so um, that's that stuff and we'll get into like on the back end how do you do the processing and how do you do storage and we're just going to look at MongoDB but you can certainly use other type of storage technology you can store stuff flat in a file 
You can use a regular traditional database, like a relational database. You can use key value store, all this type of stuff, but we're just gonna kind of stick to something simple, MongoDB. It's easy to get up and going, and I'll show you that, how to install and get that going. Uh, for your processing, we can use Express. Um, we're gonna use Express, and that's the Java -based, JavaScript-based technology for the backend, even though it's in the backend, it uses JavaScript. You can also use Spring, which is something I used to use a lot back in the days, and that's a Java-based technology. So for people who sort of like wanna keep uh, the front-end and back-end languages the same and just put them in one language, that's one attraction of using Express. And some people say it's simpler and all that stuff, but uh, people like it because uh, besides simplicity, they use one language, JavaScript on the front end, JavaScript on the back end. Then there are people who know JavaScript and they like, Java, sorry, and they like using something like uh, Java backend. And one of the things that allow them to do Java backend very easily and take care of some of the heavy lifting is the Spring framework. And uh, that's built, like I say, on Java. And they would still end up using HTML and JavaScript on the front end. Um, it gets more complex if you totally want to do your backend and frontend in Java, you could use JSF, which is another frontend technology, but it actually doesn't, it, it generates HTML and JavaScript, but you don't have to program in it. You still program in Java, but we're not even gonna even look at that. Um, not because I hate it, I used to do it, but we're not gonna look at it in a worthwhile. And then we're gonna tie, um, once we finished covering uh, our HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, we're gonna kind of tie it up with um, single page application frameworks and one specifically Angular JS. Um, there are a number of them. There's Backbone, Spine JS, um, Ember, and who knows what else. Um, I've tried some of them, but I still really like Angular JS, and I'm going to use that show sure that. If you like something else, feel free once you know all this stuff to go ahead and try and tackle some of those other ones. Um, you don't have to use a single page or application framework. It's just one of those things that over years of people developing a front end application, They've learned some techniques and, see, techniques and seen certain patterns occur over and over, and they wrap it up into a framework. So that when you go to build your front-end application, you don't have to go through some of that headache. And so, uh, yeah, it's good to kind of leverage those kind of lessons learned from people. So we'll use AngularJS. Um, and then that's, so that's gonna represent our front-end technology. Then in the back-end, like I said, we're gonna use processing, we're gonna use Express, that's where we're gonna start. And whether or not we do Spring, I think it's gonna be very unlikely but we can touch on it at some point if there's interest in that stuff or I might just show a short video on it um, after we do Java. But, and then we're gonna use MongoDB and that's gonna be our backend. And then we can start talking about, hey, how do we, now that we know front-end and back-end, you know, that's the two parts of the web development, how can we start doing website and web applications? And there's a subtle difference between the two, but that's not important. And then now we can use something like the Angular full stack Yeoman generator, which again, all that stuff will, I'll explain to you and show you how to install, get everything going, right? Like the goal is to walk you from here all the way through, so I'm gonna show you everything. Um, but yeah, I will use Angular full stack generator now to encapsulate all this and make it easier so that you, when you're using these technologies, they make sense. Again, that those lesson learned and people trying to not only use Angular alone on the front end, but using this stuff in the back end, they've seen some patterns and learned some lessons and they go, oh, let's package that up into a framework and um, you know, have some opinion about where you put stuff and how you organize your code. And so that's in the Angular full stack generator um, thing. Um, then uh, I'd like to do some desktop and system programming. And I personally, I love um, these languages that I'm showing you here, uh, especially you know, like assembly language and C. I really, really like them. And some people will tell you that, oh, um, you know, there's no place for assembly, you know, people just program at a much higher level lang layer, like in Java and Python and all these other things. But I still think it's really, really cool. And for, if there's anybody who wanna learn assembly language, I'll certainly do some videos. It might be very early, um, but I'll put it out there just 20 years from now, maybe somebody go, hey, what's the assembly thing? But I love assembly language. Uh, C is also one of my other favorite languages. Yeah, I think C is small. Um, well-defined, the scope is well-defined, and uh, not as hard as some people think, and I'd like to show you that also. Uh, C++ is also another language that I like, not as much as I like C and C++, plus, and C and assembly, but um, pretty close. Um, Google Go is also another language I play with a little bit. Um, I wanna do some video because I wanna learn it even better. Um, 
and I think it's more like C. And so I could show you any one of these language independently. So I can like show you assembly without showing you C or C++ without showing you C or Google Go without showing you C. But I actually think if I, sh or I was allowed to teach somebody assembly and then teach them C, I can tie back and show them how you know, certain things in C tie back to assembly and all certain things in C++ tie back to C and all there are certain structures in Google Go that tie back to C. Um, same thing with Java, all certain constructs in Java very much come from um, C++ and that's not by accident either. None of these things are by accident. And once you know go Java, there's this certain nice scripting language I like called Groovy um, for, and you can do serious application with that too and, and it's pretty cool. You can even do web development using the Grails framework but we're not going to look at that. And then, um, again, if we decide to talk, touch on Spring, this is the same Spring that's in here for backend. You can use Spring not only for backend, but uh, you can use it for desktop programming. But once you understand Spring, you can see how it could fit in there. And if you know Spring, because it's built on Java, you can use the JIPSTA framework, which actually uses Spring, Java, and for the backend. And then for the front end, it uses AngularJS. So in order to use JS, you kind of need to know AngularJS and AngularJS, you know, kind of wraps up all these things here. So this graph is a little bit more complex than the other chart graph I showed you, but all the information is still there. And this one I think is a little bit more accurate and a little bit more detailed, right? So I just kind of move along the other ones and remove certain things and um, whatever. Uh, at the end of the day, um, this is what I like to take you on. And, and show you all of this. All right, and FYI, uh, I also plan to do another set, a totally different set of videos, not supposed to be on computer programming, but like on big data. So uh, I'm not gonna put that in here, but that's just kind of FYI, and that's gonna be way down the road. But bottom line is, this is what I would like to show in terms of software development and computer programming. And thanks for your time, and uh, look forward to a video about at least once a week and sometime maybe two, three a week, depending on how long the videos are and how much time I get, but I still have a day job, but I'll definitely try to do one video a week at least. All right. Take care. Bye.